Yeah, in terms of the, the lessons learned that we saw when we worked on this publication with NDI on gender caucuses and gender commissions, we saw a lot of interesting things. First of all, as I said, numbers are important. It's important to see more women in parliaments, but it's not enough. It's also critical to have some sort of organizational structure and a commitment to work across party lines to move forward the gender agenda. For instance, there are parliaments like Uruguay, which have a relatively very small percentage of women elected, about 11 percent, and yet the Banca de Bicameral, the uh, Bicameral Gender uh, Caucus, has been able to achieve quite a lot with small numbers and yet with clear unity and organization between them. Um, they've been able to move forward on issues of health and they've been able to move forward on issues of, of domestic violence, for instance, which has been so important in that country. So the first thing we looked at is how they go about doing that. There are a lot of different models that could be followed. You have to look at issues, for instance, of, of structure. Will the caucus have a president? Will, how will the leadership be? Will it be rotating? Will it be hierarchical? Will it be more vertical? So each of these um, different caucuses, starting with Uruguay, for instance, had to go through this process of designing the appropriate structure. And then they also had to work very hard, and this is something we saw that was interesting in Uruguay, in terms of building links building links with the women's ministry, building links with, with men and, and potential allies among the male parliamentarians within civil society groups, within the media, to give them more of a strength and more of a boost for their efforts. Another very interesting model is in, in Ecuador, where they decided, um, after the approval of the new constitution, and they've redesigned within that the Congress, not to have a gender commission, they decided to opt for having a what they call the women, the group for, the assembly group for women's rights in, in Ecuador. And what's so interesting about this is that it includes men and women, includes quite a high number of men, and includes 40% or more of the entire parliament participates in this group. And they've been able to work across party lines and across also gender divisions to promote a very progressive, a series of very progressive policies in terms of the gender agenda. Um, so, as I said, the issue of structure is critical to define and it's going to depend on each case. There is no one-size-fits-all model. The issue of, um, of defining the agenda and building the alliances that are necessary, of having also the contacts and the information necessary so that the policies can be based in facts. Many times the gender agenda is, is dismissed by people who don't believe in the issues uh, related to, to gender rights and gender democracy, so it's very critical to make sure that the, the data and the facts are there to make the case. And then, of course, also the issue of, um, of communication strategy, of making sure that the, the issues and the policies aren't just taking place in a bubble, which sometimes a problem in the worst case scenario could be a bubble, but rather really making sense and connecting with people um, across the spectrum so that it's actually a part of, um, of a much broader agenda. Another, I think, important lesson learned is how are these commissions and caucuses able to get the gender issues into the woodwork? Know, into the framework of, of the Congress itself. So it's not just about, obviously the key thing is changing public policies, but another issue is how to make these processes more sustainable within the Parliament. So we've seen a number of different and interesting initiatives in terms of women's uh, gender caucuses, looking at um, establishing rules of the game that require gender analysis in budgets, for instance, so gender budgeting that now has to become part of the parliamentary process. Uh, or also including a, some kind of a gender analysis unit, establishing a new unit within the parliament that has authority for, for reviewing um, draft legislation and verifying that the draft legislation, or at least in analyzing the impact on gender of the draft legislation. So there's a series of different um, instruments that the groups can also use to ensure that these gender processes are now part of the congressional or the parliamentary infrastructure. That can include, for instance, what are the rules of the game in terms of the participation of men and women in the parliament, and different things like you know, child care issues within the parliament, uh, sitting hours within the parliament. There are a whole series of parliamentary rules that the, um, the caucuses and commissions also have to look internally at, not just look at the broader public policy picture, but also think about for themselves and for women in the future who want to participate and be parliamentarians. How are the rules of the game and how conducive are they to a gender-friendly environment?